my name's Feline Howes. I'm a GP and public health physician and I'm the manager of the Evidence in Practice Unit at Primary Health Tasmania. In 2017, a review by the Australian Commission for Safety and Quality in Healthcare highlighted the need for appropriate and structured information to support patients during transitions of healthcare. The Emergency Decision Guidelines and Yellow Envelope are tools developed to support clinicians at the point of care particularly when transferring residents between the residential aged care setting and the hospital emergency department. The yellow envelope is just that, a canary yellow A4 envelope. It was created to summarise key patient handover information on the outside of the envelope and you can then provide more detailed information such as the relevant health records within. The completed envelope then travels with the resident to the emergency department. Staff in the ED can then complete the reverse side of the envelope with their appropriate information and then this accompanies the resident back to their home in the aged care facility. The emergency decision guidelines are a step-by-step -step guide to provide information on the identification, assessment and management of an acutely unwell or deteriorating resident in the aged care facility. The emergency decision guidelines use ISOBAR principles to assist staff to provide the required information during clinical handover. This reduces communication errors and enhances patient safety and the delivery of care. The following video is a reminder of what can happen when the ISOBAR principles are not used. The dialogue is between a registered nurse and a general practitioner, where the resident is experiencing a deterioration in their condition. Hello, this is Dr. Jones speaking. Oh, hi, it's Les from Medics. I'm ringing you about Mavis. She apparently doesn't feel well. I'm sorry, but who is this calling? Oh, it's Les from Medics Residential Care Home. I'm ringing you about Mavis, uh, your resident. I've been asked to call you because she's had a stomach ache this morning and she says she doesn't feel well. Oh yes, do you mean Mavis Smith? What are her symptoms? Yes, I'm talking about Mavis Smith. I was told by the morning carer that she was complaining of a stomach ache and is feeling hot. She also didn't eat her lunch today. So is she febrile? What about any other symptoms? What is her urine output or bowel actions? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't actually seen her. I was just asked to call. I don't think we've taken a temperature and I certainly haven't been told of any other symptoms. I think she has a catheter. And what about her mental state? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, they might have mentioned she's a bit more confused, but then she is 91 after all. Well, that's not a lot to make a decision on. I'm in the middle of consultations right now. Can you please go and check on Mavis and call me back if you need me to visit at the end of the day. Otherwise, I'll drop in tomorrow at 8am. Okay. I have a bit to do first, but I'll check her on my shift. The nurse did not call back. He completed some office work and then became distracted by other issues. Dr Jones assumed that as she had not been called, it was okay to delay the visit until the next morning. When the doctor arrived, Mrs Smith was septic from her urinary tract infection. She required transport via ambulance to the emergency department and was admitted to hospital for intravenous antibiotics. In contrast to the last scenario, the registered nurse will now use the ISOBAR communication framework. ISOBAR is a well-recognised memnonic for communicating the minimum amount of information required for a clinical handover. A patient safety check process at the end of the handover will also assist to focus on the patient's safety as the priority. Many of the barriers to good communication can be overcome by using a structured communication tool like ISOBAR. Now let's see how the nurse's communication skills and importantly the outcome for the patient differs in this scenario. Hello, Dr Jones speaking. Hi, it's Les Johnson from Medics Residential Aged Care. I'm ringing you about a resident who's under your care, Mavis Smith. I was advised when I came on shift that Mavis has been unwell, so I immediately undertook an assessment of her. Mavis is a 91 year old with a history of hypertension and diabetes. Right now she's telling me she has crampy lower abdominal pain, is feeling hot, nauseous and unwell. 
She has an indwelling catheter in situ and I noted that her urine's dark and the smell is quite offensive. We have done a urinalysis dipstick of her urine, which was positive for nitrites, leukocytes and a trace of blood. She's febrile at 38.5 Celsius and her pulse rate is 92 with a BP of 160 over 90. This is a bit elevated from Mavis's normal BP. I note she's just been given her usual medications and paracetamol for a fever. The staff have reported she's disorientated and I've also noted from her past history that she's had previous urinary tract infections. I'll email a script to the pharmacy and can you please arrange to get it collected. I'll be in as soon as I've completed my afternoon consultations. This will be around 6pm and then I can review Mavis and write up her antibiotics on the medication chart. Also, please keep a close eye on Mavis, especially her temperature, and call me if you become more concerned. Continue to give her Panadol for her fever if it's required. Are you okay with this? Yes, I'll talk to Mavis and discuss the plan with her. We'll continue to monitor her vital signs, especially her temperature. I'll arrange for an MSU to be collected and sent to pathology. Also, we'll collect the antibiotic from the pharmacy so that it's ready to be given once you've added it to the medication chart when you visit later today. Great. Thanks. I'll see you later. Thank you. The nurse promptly went back to Mrs Smith and explained his discussion with the doctor and outlined the management plan. He also contacted Mrs Smith's daughter, her next of kin, to ensure she was aware of the situation. Dr Jones attended a few hours later and Mrs Smith was prescribed oral antibiotics. Her vital signs and urinary output were monitored over the next few days and Mrs Smith quickly recovered. The way we communicate clinical information can have a significant impact on the health outcomes of our residents. If we do not communicate well, a resident's care may be compromised, resulting in adverse health outcomes. So let's revisit the key points of ISOBAR. ISOBAR stands for Identify, Situation, Observations, Background, Agreed Plan and Read Back. I, identify the patient, introduce yourself and where you are from. S is situation, so provide the current diagnosis, the specific clinical problems or current concerns and any critical results. O is for observations, check, update and discuss recent vital signs. B is background, provide and discuss all of the relevant medical and support information. A, agree to a plan of action, and R is read back. Now review the critical information to check understanding. If you would like any further information, please contact Primary Health Tasmania.